There is no doubt that Donald Trump's Make America Great Again campaign slogan resonated with millions of voters who felt that the country was in decline. And his improbable ascent to the White House served as vindication for those who believed that elites from both parties had abandoned the American working class. Trump made the creation of jobs and the rejection of globalization key parts of his campaign, a strategy which certainly paid off across the Rust Belt, and which, in the process, shifted the very identity of the Republican Party, at least temporarily. In his new book, The Republican Workers' Party, former Trump speechwriter and transition advisor F.H. Buckley gives us his take on what the Republican Workers' Party is and how it promises to renew the American dream. He joins us now. Frank, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. So, Frank, first of all, I, I was watching an interview you did in C-SPAN, and one of your callers said, Republican Workers' Party, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> so given the recent history of the Republican Party, how is it not an oxymoron? Well, uh, it would have been for the old Republican Party. The Trump campaign was fought on two fronts. It was fought on the ground of cultural nationalism against Hillary Clinton, but it was also economically nationalist and quite unlike the old Republican Party, which still is in shock. So this was a party, Trump's party, that emphasized jobs. And jobs are pretty much all you want the government to do, right? You know, if you had to write a, a program yeah. for the government, create the economic conditions for jobs is all you need, because after jobs, all the good stuff follows. Well, we'll talk about how well he's done in that respect in a moment, but, but you know, the old Republican Party is still around. Yeah, you know, the, the libertarian wing, the neocon yeah. wing, they're still around. And, and, the, and the Congressional Repo Republican Party, which is its own thing, is still there. Um, what is the relationship between this Republican Workers' Party and those wings of the party and of the conservative movement? They're totally in shock. They haven't figured it out. I think a Trump wing is emerging congressionally. But crucially, Trump found the sweet spot in American politics. And the sweet spot is middle of the road on economics and very conservative on cultural matters. But middle of the road on economic matters means we didn't want to go into entitlements. We didn't want to go into... I mean, you didn't want to cut entitlements. We didn't want to cut them. We didn't want to talk about them. And we didn't want to go after Bernie Sanders. So can a workers' party yeah. be a workers' party when it's not a pro-union party? Um, we did not want to go after private sector unions. We thought private sector unions were exactly the kind of people we wanted voting for us. Public sector is something else. But not going against unions doesn't mean it's, it's not the same thing as being supportive of, of unions. It's making, you know, passing legislation to supporting legislation that makes it easier, for example, to organize in the workplace. Um, are there plans for that? There aren't. And in fact, the appointees um, are very pretty right wing mm -hmm. on labor matters. That's not where we started out, but, uh, you know, bet there's always a difference between the mystique of, of a campaign and the reality of what happens after. So, so you make a distinction between private unions and public sector yeah. unions, why? Because it was thought that the public sector unions were more basically political and didn't care about the economy, whereas the private sector unions would care about the economy. And the economy is coming roaring back right now. The best thing you can do for a private sector union member is make sure he's got a job. Yeah. So, you know, the book makes an argument pretty clearly that the United States as the land of opportunity, uh, those days are gone. That there are many, many more countries where, whose citizens are more mobile, yeah. And, and more equal. Yeah. Um, among those countries are, almost all of those countries got more mobile and yeah. more equal, not through conservative working class coalitions, but through good old social democratic or democratic socialist, if you will, coalitions and right. majorities, the Nordic countries. So why can't the Democratic Party, let's say the Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party, begin to appeal to the Democrat, to the working class and begin to achieve this mobility and this equality which we have lost. Very early on in the campaign, I had dinner with a congressman who, dis who railed about what he called right-wing Marxist. And a right-wing Marxist, I don't know what he meant by that, but I, did, I heard that and I said, that's me, <laughs> right? I'm a Marxist because I think there's a class divide that we have to do something about. And so yeah. is Bernie Sanders. And the difference is Bernie Sanders would seek the socialist ends through socialist means, and Trump would seek the same ends through right-wing means or, or free market means. And I think that'll win. But I think that's going to be the debate in the future. 
-hmm. right? We're all, we should all say we've come to the point where we're a class society, we're not mobile. I think that's changing now, by the way. This was certainly a problem back three or four years ago, right? It's beginning to change, but that's a great issue. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the countries that are, you know, more mobile. So I was coming from Canada, vastly more mobile. By the way, Medicare probably helps in that mm -hmm. respect, okay? Um, and indeed, in many respects, all that Trump was trying to do was kind of Canadianize the, the <laughs> politics. So in about the 20 seconds we have left, what are the possibilities? What are the likelihood that this new Republican Workers' Party will prevail against all the factions in the Republican Party who don't want it? and against the erratic personality and executive uh, behavior say, of President Trump. I won't say anything about that because, you know, God, what can I say? Mm -hmm. What I can say, however, is that old right-wing party, the party of just pure free markets and devil take the hindmost, that's dead. All right. Okay, Frank, the book, very interesting book, is called The Republican Workers' Party, subtitled how the Trump victory drove everyone crazy and why it was just what we needed. Well, the first part of that subtitle is certainly true. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Frank. Right.